So are the queen of spacing out. You space out, you zone out, you do the Mongdery better than anyone. Um, and for that reason, you've been in the news, you've been on Korean television, you've been in the newspaper as well. Um, tell us about that. Tell us about the queen of zoning out. <laughs> wow, wow, it sounds great to be the queen of zoning yeah. out. <laughs> well, I always knew that I was good at spacing out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I always wanted to try out this competition because oh. I knew of the competition already from the news 10 years ago, uh, but I just didn't really have the opportunity to apply for it. Mm. And then I saw that this year is the 10th anniversary. Yeah. So I thought, okay, this is the time I should be part of it. And then, yeah, I participated mm. and very easily <laughs> became the wow. winner. <laughs> what, do you, what do you know about the competition? Because in preparing this, I spoke to my Korean teacher, I spoke to my nephew and I spoke to my sister and they all went, oh, and they all knew this competition. Mm. So it, it sort of transcends generations, I think, here. Mm. But for those that don't know, what is it? Well, um, I think I got to know about this competition more after actually winning because before I just thought it's a fun activity, mm. but there was actually a deeper meaning to this competition that I heard from the creator of uh, the competition. Okay. Uh, so she's a visual artist called Oop Siang, and she made this competition because uh, she felt that many people are living like too many too busy lives, mm. and uh, they like like herself, they they experience burnouts, uh, and that's why she felt like uh, spacing out actually helped her overcome her burnout, her mm. own burnout. And that's why she made this competition. So to have uh, tens, uh, not tens of people, like almost 100 people in the middle of a bustling city just mm. spacing out. So it's kind of, it's uh, it's kind of not only an activity, but art. Mm. And it also has a deep meaning to it. So to tell people that it's okay to space out and take a rest and relax at times. It's not very Korean spacing out. It's not a thing that I associate with being Korean. Exactly. But mm. then the thing of the thing that is Korean about it is that yeah. people actually compete <laughs> against each other <laughs> yeah. even yeah. when spacing out. Yeah. That's yeah. the kind of irony in there. Mm. Yeah. Yun so have you heard about this competition? Did you know about it before we realized we were going to speak with Soa today? Yes, I did, but briefly. Just a random question here. Do you like think of random thoughts when you zone out or you just blank your head out? Well, in my daily life, when I when I zone out, I really think of nothing because mm. that's the moment when people tell me, like, mm. <laughs> mm. so at that time, I really don't think of anything. But mm. during the competition, of course, uh, 90 minutes, it's impossible to wow. think of nothing. So mm. I would just not really think of anything specific, but I would just embrace what's happening around me. So mm. because it's not a quiet competition, you hear an MC um, entertaining the audience and you also hear the people walking by at Han River. So I would just not get stressed out by anything that I hear, I would just listen to it, but not really uh, being focused on what they say, just mm. lightly. Mm. And there's a lot of different people there, right? There's, mm. um, it's not just random members of public. They have thousands of people applying. What kind of people were there when you did it? Well, uh, we had really a variety of people. Mm. The first person that I think of is Kwa who's mm. a famous uh, short track uh, skater. So we had athletes and also um, a psychiatrist, um, a DJ, a senior fashion model. Um, who's the uh, were there any young people there? Yeah, I, I, of course. How young did the the young ones go? Um, I think elementary school or wow. even younger. There were also families competing because you could <laughs> compete in a team. So you would have the a family of a dad, mom, and two kids. Mm. <laughs> so that I saw as well. And I, there was also a person in a watermelon suit. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw that. Yeah, and also <laughs> Dunguri, um, oh. It's a character. That's a. It's a raccoon. Okay. Mm -hmm. they, I think every year in recent years in the competition, they had one of these characters. Yeah. This year it was Toguri. Last year it was the the jelly gum, jelly gum, mm -hmm. the big pink bear. Okay. I think that's just uh, just for fun yeah. to have one of those uh, characters there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I realized that mm. they pick. A, a variety of uh, people with different jobs on purpose. Mm. So if you have, if there were like maybe 100 announcers like me mm -hmm. applying, they would only pick maybe one or two of them because I didn't see any other announcers at the competition. Okay. So I think they're doing that on purpose to have a variety of people oh. compete there. This is a weird question. It's kind of personal as well, but what's it like inside your head? Because I find this question fascinating because mm -hmm. different people inside their head some people have like one voice some people have many voices it's very noisy some people have nothing like what's it like inside your head do you have a, an inner narration constantly going is it noisy is it quiet oh that's an interesting question i think i used to think a lot about all kinds of things mm. but 
recently, I think I'm really good at focusing on what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't think too much about the future, about the past, just about the present. So, yeah, I don't think it's that noisy in my head, okay. but it's very creative. That's good. That's a good thing to have that. <laughs> and another thing oh. that's different from the past is uh, I was, I mean, I was born in Germany mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, my first language, I mean, my mother tongue is Korean, but I would say my best language was German. So yeah. in my head, there was like almost only German, but now there's more Korean inside. Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. You dream in German or Korean? I think Both? I dream in Korean now. Yeah. I used to dream in German. Okay. Oh. I gave a speech at um, Hanyang University, end of, and I, I said an expression in German. Uh, I, I can't remember it now, but it's something like you meet everybody in life twice mm. is the German expression, which I think is a wonderful expression. I think it comes from a movie. And uh, my, my students came up to me afterwards. They said, David, we love that, but your German pronunciation was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had to apologize. So you don't remember the ex exact I've phrase got it German? written down somewhere. Mm. Um, but what I uh, wanted to say is that inside my head, it sounds like this. Or, There's nothing going on in there. It's just empty. And when I talk to my friends about this, like one of them is a musician, he says like, David, I have like two, three voices talking all the time. Oh. Like, what, what are you going to do? What should we do this? Yes, How should we go? Can... You have voices? Yeah. You're immediately doing this. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Yunsa? Uh, yeah, I do have two. Like... Okay. Yeah. I've got nothing. How oh. interesting. I don't think anything. Well, I don't. I just sit there and there's just nothing. I'm like Homer Simpson or something. Oh. I don't know. I've quietened my monkey mind, uh, the Buddhists <laughs> might say. So I was curious about what goes on in yours. Is it, were you able to quieten your, your thoughts and your impulses? Or mm, Well, I think, as I said, I zone out very easily in my daily life. So mm. I guess, yeah, maybe it's also pretty quiet in my head as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. See, I'm thinking of nothing right yeah, now. Yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Those uncomfortable yeah. silences, yeah. yeah I don't even feel that uncomfortable if yeah. it's silent. Mm. <laughs> right, right. That's a good way of describing it. With your victory, mm. um, you got in the newspaper. There was there was a photo and you had like real main character energy, <laughs> yeah. I think is the expression to describe it. Tell us about the victory and what happens when you win this competition. Well, uh, first off, I was really uh, humbled by being in the newspaper for the first time in my life. Yeah. Uh, but with that face, <laughs> <laughs> people told me that picture looks like I lost my country. Not I even had Yeah, so uh, it felt great to win, yeah. of course. I mean, I had confidence uh, in becoming at least one of the top three. Mm. Um, but mm -hmm. then when I, when the third place was called out, which was Kwak Yoongi and mm. his team, mm. I felt like, okay, I think I'm the winner here because I just, uh, because the, the, the person I thought would be my biggest rival just got the third place. So... You're so Korean. So, yeah, it started yeah. out as a fun, uh, ju just a fun, uh, um, uh, you know, um, fun activity for me mm -hmm. to take part. But then uh, once I did apply and I got into the final 80 or yeah. uh, 70 teams, uh, from that moment on, I was becoming very serious about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought I had a good chance. And then I kind of imagined um, the them calling out my name oh. in the last few minutes and then it happened so yeah <laughs> I want to talk about that idea mm. of manifesting things mm. because I, I've heard you say that before and that during the competition you took a nap beforehand and you planned everything out mm. and things like that how did how did friends, how did family, how did loved ones react when you told them that you, you, you were the queen of zoning out? <laughs> well, some of my friends actually, actually said they, they believed in me that I, mm. that I would win. Yeah. And then others were very surprised because uh, I'm a very, I guess, energetic person. And mm -hmm. for, to some, it feels like energetic people would not be able to just sit there and do nothing. Mm. <laughs> but then I have the calm side in me. That's why I guess, yeah, it was not a big deal for me. But yeah, everyone everyone thought it was very um, fun that I won because uh, every time I would tell someone, you know, I, uh, everyone, someone would congratulate me, we would burst out in laughter because mm. it's not something like, oh, you got a hundred score in some kind of exam. <laughs> it's yeah. like you, you won in the spacing out competition. <laughs> yeah. And from that, a lot of media attention, like CNN and things mm. like that. What was that like? Oh, well... I kind of saw that coming too, because okay. <laughs> uh, mm. as I said, it's not just uh, one of the spacing on competitions, but the 10th anniversary. Mm. Uh, so the moment I was at Han River, I felt like there was quite a lot of media attention. Uh, so when people interviewed me, pre-interviewed me before mm. the competition, mm. um, I even imagined, OK, they will be uh, proud that they interviewed me, because if I become the winner, they have some more extensive interview. Oh. <laughs> <afterwards>. <laughs> you have <laughs> Confidence in yourself. I think yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
tell us about this. I think it now is the time then to talk about this idea of manifesting, mm -hmm. because this is what you, I, I, I hear you're describing. And normally in Korea, I think the idea is you're meant to be humble. You're meant mm. to be quiet. You're meant to downplay your advantages. And when Korean people say stuff or they do their taggy soges or introductions, they'll apologize for their terrible English while speaking perfectly. Mm. And it's always downplaying skills. But you, you not only seem to have confidence, Soa, but you also seem to have this idea of uh, manifesting a future that you desire. Mm. Well, I think this all started in my early 20s when mm. I wrote uh, a future journal. I don't know mm. if you can call it that way in English, mm. but I would write down things that have not happened yet, but I would write it down in past tense. Mm -hmm. For example, in 2000, in year 2000, uh, I would just write 2013, I don't know, June 1st. Mm. I became a weathercaster at Arirang TV and then... On my next page, I would write down 2014, I became a reporter at Arirang TV. So I had uh, some of these um, future jobs mm -hmm. that I wanted to uh, get. I, I wrote them down and then a lot of that happened. Wow. I think it's not magic. I think mm. it's because I wrote that down I and I always had that in my head. I kind of uh, very unconsciously, my, what, my um, what do you say, my... Uh, whatever I did, just mm. let me to that path, let me to that goal, kind of. Mm. So it's not magic. Do you think this is something that's about, I mean, do you tell, but you seem to talk to people about this, like writing something down as if you've done it. Because, for example, sports people, mm -hmm. before they take a shot, before they take a penalty, before they take a kick, they'll visualize it going in mm. and then they'll take the kick for this positive mm. reinforcement. Do you have any idea what's going on? This idea of writing it down and then it comes true. It sounds like a Disney story. Mm, have you guys read the book uh, Secret? Yeah. I think it's similar to okay. uh, what's in that book. What's the book? Tell um, me about the book. It, I, I, it's been a long time since I read it, but uh, it's basically about what I just said. Like I, uh, you write things down, and then uh, you would act towards what your goal is mm. very unconsciously. Uh, do you guys remember? It's a <laughs> yeah. self development book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So it tells how to like, you know, manage yourself. Yeah. Okay. So the book says like reality equals vivid dream. So mm. if you like really manifest into your dream and you imagine yourself being in that dream, mm. then you will unconsciously, as you said, like um, go into that way mm. by yourself. It's not your like magic. It's not like black magic or something, but you just think about your goal every day while writing your journals or diaries. Yeah. So it helps. Wow. So I think maybe even the reason why I could be on uh, you quiz, probably we're going to talk about that later too, but yeah. uh, maybe the, um, taking part in the space of competition was also part of my unconsciousness telling me if you take part here, mm -hmm. you could receive more attention from people and that could even uh, take you to uh, some talk show. Wow. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's really interesting that that, that, that that happens, that writing something down and this idea of your unconscious. So from an early age, you'd wanted to be... An announcer, you'd wanted that thing? Um, yes, that started uh, when I was in uh, university, I think when I was a uh, sophomore or junior. I actually didn't have a dream back then. I, I wasn't sure what mm. I want to become, but I randomly asked my boyfriend back then, who's currently my husband. Oh. <laughs> I asked Did you write that down in the diary? Oh, <laughs> no, I, <don't>. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I, um, I asked him, uh, what do you think I should do in the future? And then, like... He didn't even hesitate uh, two seconds, I think. And he said, how about being on Arirang TV? Mm. Oh, and I thought it's a good idea. And then I started to look for, uh, I wrote down on Naver, Yongo, Anaunso, and then mm. I went to an English uh, English MC Academy. And then from then on, I started to have those opportunities. For instance, I was uh, on um, KBS uh, G20 TV. So mm -hmm. I was uh, a caster for the G20 Seoul Summit. So, and then I went, I started off as a reporter at TBS EFM and later on went to Arirang. So yeah, mm. it just started with that one idea from my uh, wow. husband. <laughs> How long have you been married? Um, six years now. Six years. Yes. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is good. It, so we've been together 16 years. Wow. <gasps> What's the secret to a happy to a long happy yeah, relationship? Tell me, tell me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know because we don't even we don't even fight. We <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah um, Maybe we're just meant to be. Oh, <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> Inyon was a word yeah. that I, I taught some of my students mm. from uh, past lives and things like that. Um, what about confidence? Because I think one of the hardest things, not only for young people, mm -hmm. but I, I'm generalizing 51 million Koreans here, but Korean, you're normally meant to be humble in society as well. And also for women as well. 
how important is confidence? Where did you get your confidence? Where did you get the ability to say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go and get it? And... Oh, well, first off, I'm not that confident. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have that confidence inside me, but mm. uh, I mean, we're talking about me as a space, space out queen. Mm. And that's why I'm talking about confidence a mm. lot. But uh, I don't think I'm that like on the confidence level. I'm not that high, mm. but uh I remember how my mom always told me when I was little, uh, you can do anything you want. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, that's from my mom. That also came from my parents. Like that uh, if I want to do this, I can do it. If I mm. want to do that, I can do it. So that's like basically my uh, where my confidence comes from, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think if you put your effort in something that you have interest in, you're going to get better in that. And mm. then one day you'll mm. just, yeah, ace it. <laughs> Did the um, German school environment encourage that kind of confidence? Um, I'm not sure, because I mean I didn't. I can't really compare uh, German education and uh, Korean education yes. because I went to a Korean school for just one and a half mm. years. Um, but probably I would say that German education would give children more confidence than mm. in Korea. Mm. I mean, don't quote me on it, but yeah. yeah. Oh. It's okay, we're only recording you on this, but the, <laughs> the German students I have are generally very outspoken, very confident. Oh, they, they, they have their opinions, oh. and again, I, I'm generalizing a population, <laughs> but I think in the West, you're encouraged to voice your opinion, to look mm -hmm. people in the eye, to stand up straight, and that's very different from sometimes mm -hmm. what happens in Korea. Just to go back to this, uh, we will move on soon, but mm -hmm. the idea of writing down what you want, I think sometimes it's hard to be honest with yourself, or it's hard to... You know, we, we all have these things we want to do, but we're a bit scared to, to say, I would like to do that, but what if I fail? And what if I yes. look bad? Mm. And we're afraid to say or do what we want because of because of Nunti, because of the social gaze, because of the fear of failure. How, how do you contend with that? So what do you say to people who have these dreams, but they might, not even telling other people, but telling yourself, writing it down for yourself is hard. Hmm. You're zoning out again. <laughs> 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 How can you be honest with yourself about what you want? Yes, That's a hard um, thing, I think, mm. for, for lots of young people. Yeah, I think if you're not sure, just try it out, even if you're not sure if you are into something or not. Mm. Because for me, for instance, I like being on television, but sometimes I'm not sure whether I like seeing myself on TV or mm -hmm. whether I like uh, to deliver information to other people. So sometimes mm -hmm. I'm not really sure which part of that uh that part which what part i like uh you know yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. regarding being on tv which part is like what i really like mm. so just try everything out i guess yes mm. Mm. do you get any you so do you get, are you getting any motivation your your job was to uh, your job your your dream your goal <laughs> is to do something like this yeah totally mm. because um i even lied to my diary so mm. being like honest to myself and like being consistent with like vividly dreaming but not really daydreaming but you put in your effort to do so right mm. so it really motivates me to have you on this Aww. podcast <laughs> mm. yeah we lie to ourselves sometimes i yeah. think i think that's the impressive thing about it that you're mm. able to be in a sense honest with yourself about mm. the things that you want yeah mm. and i, I also want to say um the things that i wrote in my future journal they were re realistic mm. um i think they were not like you know sometimes you say dream big so that you can mm. Uh, get at least close to your dream mm -hmm. but what I wrote down I think was pretty realistic and mm -hmm. very straightforward mm -hmm. so that's uh, so, so maybe that's a tip that I could give to people um, even my to-do list on a daily basis I write down things like uh, dishwashing mm -hmm. Or <laughs> very strange. Yeah, no, yeah. seriously. And then I have so many things ticked off yeah. that I can be proud of that I just, you know, managed to do on um, today. Yeah. Mm. So it doesn't have to be all like really dreamy and everything. Mm. And you don't have to write down, I want to become the president or mm. uh, just to get close to that. You just write down things that you actually can realize mm. uh, so out of the 10 things that you write down some mm. things could be that you just have to put in a little bit of effort to, to so that you can uh, actually um, uh, materialize that and then other things could be a little step higher mm. that you might be able to achieve and might not mm. maybe ticking off your to-do list is another source of your confidence maybe because you gotta believe in, in yourself because you have your self-confidence by, oh, I did it, so mm. I can do another thing. So, yeah, that kind of confidence, maybe? Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And it's good to have those plans and things like that. I sometimes look back on my life and the things that I've done and I forget half of the things. And I'm like, well, I did that. I don't, I don't remember doing half the things that I've done or know why I am here. Doing what you're doing, so how does, this is a bit sensitive, but we were talking about it on the way over here. You know, so how does, how does beauty and gender and everything and that work uh, in your industry? So to be an announcer, to be on television, there's a lot of that focus, right? Especially mm-hmm. in Korea. And we hear a lot about patriarchies and glass ceilings in this country. Mm-hmm. How, how's that working? Uh, well, first off, um, because I work in the English broadcasting uh, field, yeah. it's kind of different from the general uh, Korean announcer field, I would have to say, because there's less competition. There are not so many English-speaking people in Korea than there are Korean-speaking Koreans in Korea. So I don't think, like, uh, first off, beauty doesn't really matter that big in where I work. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I mean, I'm on Arirang TV, Arirang Radio, or I also was on TBS EFM. So there it didn't really really matter. Uh, I also MC for international events, but again, there, I don't think looks count that much. It's just about uh, whether you're good at, uh, you know, delivering and also whether your English is good if you're MCing for an international event. Mm. Um, so I have never really felt that uh, I didn't get a job because I'm not pretty enough or anything like that. And also regarding the glass ceiling issue, Again, I never experienced that, luckily, but I know it exists in Korean society. Mm. But, for instance, at Arirang TV, we have more female news reporters than Mm. male reporters. And uh, for us, it's like we have only... um, the, uh, usually the anchors are female mm-hmm. and the freelance announcers in many cases are male, which is the other way around in Korean news stations. At Korean news stations, mm-hmm. you have an anchor who used to be a journalist, uh, the male journalist becoming yeah. an anchor, and then you have a an, an announcer who's the uh, the female role. Right. So that's uh, the other way around at where I work. Um, but to be honest... I don't know if I can say this here on air, <laughs> but the reason, one of the reasons for why we have a smaller number of male uh, reporters is also because of, it also has got to do with the wage. Okay. You know, in Korea still, like, the males are supposed to be the kajang, the mm-hmm. head of the family, and have mm-hmm. to make, some people think they have to make more money than their female counterpart. Mm-hmm. So maybe... Having more female reporters mm-hmm. kind of also could be related to the glass ceiling issue. Yeah, maybe. Because there's also the issue of females getting less paid than males in Korea. I don't know if I can link it that way, but <sighs> yeah, but I didn't really experience anything like that before. But that's nice. That's a positive story. There are economic mm-hmm. aspects to it, but the fact that you can sit here and say, well, you know, beauty didn't matter too much, and I don't think my gender mattered too much, that you've got through on the force of your own personality, your dreams, and, and your skills, that's really nice. That's a nice message to hear, I think, for mm-hmm. some people. But I guess I was also lucky in mm-hmm. some way, and uh, also, I mean, because I have that language ability, and because I started uh, training for an, to become an announcer from mm-hmm. an I don't know, really, not really young age, but still I knew what I wanted to become from my early 20s. So, yeah, I think a lot of um, things just played out well for me. Yeah. So, yeah. How do you train to be an announcer? Because, I mean, I, I, mean, I do Ari Rag every morning and I just go on there and I, all right, Lena. <laughs> I just I just speak the same as I'm speaking now, but I hear other people on there go, yes, good morning. And they, 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 yeah, we you learn that Pai Song thing, you know, you the do. abdominal breathing. Is that right? And, well, mm-hmm. t- t- teach us something about announcing skills. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Have been sitting Friday. up straight for this yes. one. Yeah, yeah. That's great, guys. <laughs> okay. Breathe in with your nose and then breathe out with your mouth and... Your shoulders should not go up like that. Okay. <laughs> so you do that. Yeah. Okay. Breathing thing, and then later on you learn how to project your voice mm. with not only using your um your throat. throat yeah. Okay. What do they say about the face or the eyes or things like that? So the voice has got to be projected. It's got to come from the like abdomen or something. Mm. What do they say about the the, the face thing? Well. Depending on what you have to deliver, yeah. uh, facial expressions uh, matter a lot. So if you're a news reporter and you're talking about serious stuff, you shouldn't mm. be smiling. Yeah. Uh, but then if you're doing something bright, if you're a, a reporter out in the oh sorry out in the field uh, talking about a festival, then your facial expressions matter more. You should be mm-hmm. brighter, mm-hmm. and also it's important to how to stare, how to look into the camera, and mm. also have eye contact with uh, the person you interview, mm-hmm. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Mm. Do you look in the mirror and like practice smiling? 
Not anymore. Aww. Probably I did Aww. 15 years ago or so. <laughs> <laughs> There is this, um, I mean, whenever you do television and you, with the reporters or with the anchors, they're so good at looking at you and you, you're mm. talking and they're just looking at you, smiling. <laughs> and, you, and you know they're just thinking of something else, but they have this brilliant <laughs> attitude and way of doing it. I remember one time before I walked onto a TBS thing and uh, Chandwan had just died, uh, former president, not very well liked. And before I walked in, my, my PD, who I rate very highly, I still, she's one of my favorite ones, except Pang Ji Wan PD, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, she grabbed my arm and she said, David, remember everybody hates Chandwan. <laughs> and it was just that reminder that like, this is a serious thing. You're not allowed to laugh. You're not allowed to do this. It's uh, have you ever had any problems? Have you ever got in trouble? Have you ever said the wrong thing? Have you ever laughed at a funeral? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you are actually, sometimes you're supposed to be a little smiley mm. at funerals okay, in yeah. Korea. So mm. probably I did laugh, mm. but not. Any big problems on screen while you're doing these kind of things? There was this one time at TBS EFM when I was a traffic reporter and I had to talk about cows being on the expressway. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my <laughs> God. So I kind of, you know, pinched myself to not laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like but, India or something. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it could become a big accident, right? Yeah. If you have cows yeah. on, on the expressway. Mm. But I mean, it could sound funny to the person who listens. So that was one of the moments I can think of. But I, luckily, I did not laugh. And in, in, in those moments, you really think of something serious or you just think of that situation. Oh, no, maybe you should not if there are cows <laughs> on the expressway. But you know what I mean. So yeah. that and I mean... I've been in broadcasting for 12 years, so a lot happens. Mm. Sometimes you don't find your prompter, your line, and then there's silence for seconds that feel like hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happened with TBS EFM? Because, uh, again, you might not know much about yeah. this, but I used to work on TBS. I used to listen to it in the car in the days before smartphones. It was the radio. Probably I've heard your voice talk talking to me about cows. <laughs> do, do you know kind of what happened there? got shut down because of the mayor? Did that, did that go on? To be I, honest, I don't really know. I'm not sure about what's okay. happening because I quit TBS EFM be before all of that happened. Right. Because that was the time when I used to work Monday to Sunday. I was at Arirang from Monday to Friday mm. and to Saturday and Sunday for TBS EFM after I became a freelancer. So I did that for around three months and thought, okay, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> not even having one day to yeah. rest. That was, yeah. So I quit before all of that happened, all of those changes. Mm. It's hard to say no if you're a freelancer. It's hard to say no in this industry because mm. they won't ask you again sometimes. Mm. What's the future of the broadcast announcer, English language one like? Because we hear a lot about like future employment and no jobs and graduating. Yeah. Is it is it getting easier? Are there more opportunities, less opportunities? you have any idea about the future of that industry so far? Um, not really, because I kind of focus just on my jobs, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on, on my roles. I just try to uh, do my best in the roles that I get. And um, I'm kind of a very a positive uh, person. I don't really like to th worry about the future. So uh, and I have my own worries, so I wouldn't really worry about the whole industry <laughs> that much. Mm -hmm. If I have uh, something to do tomorrow, I'm happy with it or next week or at least for a month. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I I hope that there is going to be opportunities for the next hundred years or I don't know before AI takes over everything. <laughs> Social media seems to be changing things. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think now people are, are watching radio. That That's a new thing mm -hmm. for me. I know it, it's not very new, but since I've been doing it, you used to be able to walk and do radio and just wear a hat and, and wear like a hoodie yeah. and things like that because people couldn't see you. It was just a mm -hmm. voice thing. Mm -hmm. But now even doing it at like 7.40 a.m. every morning, I've got people looking at me on watching radio and you have to kind of realize eyes are on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My producer also told me to not wear hats hats anymore. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard, especially in the morning, right? Do, do you do early stuff these I actually, days? Uh, I do uh, evening for radio. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Morning stuff is hard. I think mm. it, it, it's the worst possible time. I'm a I'm not an early bird. Okay. <laughs> these girls, um, when I uh, Yunso and Hemin, when we were talking about this, they said, especially Yunso, she said tea. I want to know the tea. tea. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Yunso and Yunso, come on. <laughs> give us some questions. Yeah. So we saw your picture of you being on Quiz, and you interviewed even Kim Soo-hyun so I was like oh my god maybe she knows a lot about tea because she's in that industry so I was going to ask you about that do you have any um, fun experience to share to us about mm -hmm. the tea? Um, about give me a more specific tea about what? <laughs> um, maybe let's start off with Quiz one okay yeah. Quiz. <laughs> 
Um, Congratulations, by the you. way. That's <laughs> huge. <laughs> For those that don't know, this is Yu Des Hark and mm, his yeah. big primetime show. Yu Des Hark, the probably the most famous MC yeah. in yeah. Korea, yeah. and uh, with Cho Se Ho. Um, yeah, wow. It was one of my. That was also one of my um, future goals that mm. I didn't wow. write down but mm. that I thought about every week when I watched the show because wow. it was one of my favorite shows every Wednesday I would watch it and I would, I would imagine myself sitting there one day but I didn't know it would happen that fast and I didn't mm-hmm. know it would happen after spacing out <laughs> after winning the competition yeah. so um, anything what's he like in real life he's He's the same as I imagined. But mm. the thing is, a very interesting thing is that I did not get to meet the two MCs before we went on air. Uh, the staff was really, um, they were sure to not make us meet before the actual shooting. Mm-hmm. So when the MCs were coming down the elevator, for instance, I would stand uh, in the staircase so mm. that we don't get to say hi to each other. Wow. So the moment I went into the studio and said Annyeonghaseyo. that was really the first time we met each other mm-hmm. so they wanted to make it as real as possible ah. I guess to really make us meet for the first time and then really start from scratch I and uh, you know we also had no NGs we would just go we would have a one take mm-hmm. uh, just like we're doing here right yeah. now I guess so yeah. for an hour we would talk and then uh, the two MCs would leave for their to meet their next guest so I didn't really get to see them you know uh, behind the scenes oh. mm. Mm. that was one interesting part i thought mm. it's really interesting though that, that what you see on the television with you quiz is exactly what they're doing he's reading the questions <laughs> off the card and he's mm-hmm. doing it this is not acting he's mm. not prepared he's mm. just going with the flow and meeting people for the first time yeah. uh, it's really interesting that he would do that mm. and i also found it very interesting that i mean i knew it before but uh Cho Seho, he yeah. only has one cue card mm-hmm. which has nothing on it oh <laughs> wow. is it true mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, mm. Yu Jae Seok has th- this whole pack of questions, and Cho Seo only has this to oh, just to have a cue card uh, with saying you quiz on just the to back. hold something. Yeah. yeah. So he would just react to oh. what I say, mm. and uh, Yu Jae Seok would ask the whole question. So I thought that uh, Cho Seo's role is more difficult. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh. The reactions. I was watching it last night over dinner with my niece. And, you know, she she was very proud. She helped me make that little thumbnail on Insta. I asked her, like, oh. what should we do? She's these colors, these colors. So she helped me make it. She taught me about the tiramisu song. And then um, we were watching that together. And she was like, she was very proud of you and doing this. And then you started beatboxing and doing chicken noises. And we were just looking at each other going, is this really happening? Because the three of you were stood up dancing, like beatboxing, doing chicken noises. And I don't think my niece could really quite believe what was happening. The, you know, like to have the, the, the courage. I mean, when, when you look at, you're laughing oh now. That's quite a cool thing to do, isn't it? <laughs> I was so happy that that scene <laughs> came out. Uh, yeah, because yeah. that was really just all like ad-libbed. I mean, it's yes, not something that yes. we... Imagine. Uh, yeah, it's not something that that the writers wrote down. Oh, that would never pass the writers. <laughs> 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 that would never go past. I was like, no. <laughs> so really, I really yeah. loved how that built up. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I knew that they would ask me about my uh, my keingi, mm. but uh, I didn't know that. You know, I would ask Tuseo that moment to beatbox, and I would like do the chicken sound yeah. in there, and Tuseo would ask you just to dance. <laughs> <laughs> because I've not seen that on any other episodes. I mean, that's the best thing about it. I think yeah. that you you have that. Kenki is like personal mm. skill, something like that. Yeah. Kenki, and yours is making a chicken noise. I have a lot of Kenki. Okay, but I was not able to show them all on oh. that show. So would you let me? <laughs> yeah, can you give, can you give yeah, one to yes, Korean deconstructed? This one, a chicken oh, noise. So, so we have the chicken. Yeah. Uh, we had the beatbox. Uh-huh. Um, okay, what else can I do? You're spacing out. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll stop teasing you. It's so funny how you realize that. <laughs> this I is... guess I'm feeling very comfortable in here. <laughs> this is not as good as your chicken, but I can do a very bad horse noise. Oh, I so can do a horse too. Okay. You can oh, do a horse? Oh, my God. Okay. oh, how about we do a battle of uh, <laughs> animal sounds? And we vote. <laughs> and, and you give us the, the animal. Yeah, okay. Oh. Oh. oh, okay. Wow. Frog. Frog? You want to go first? Ribbit. That's a terrible frog. I just said ribbit. I don't know how to do a frog. How Actually, do you do I wanted frog? to do that too. Yeah, okay. But maybe a little more, um, you know, authentic. Oh. <laughs> and at night, when you have all those frogs yes, yeah, that's what I was trying choir, to think of. Yeah, yeah, let's do it yeah. together. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, did I do that? It's a different... It's a... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I never tried a fall frog before. But I want to hear your horse. My statement. horse? Yes. Okay. Close your eyes and just use your ears. Oh, okay, okay. This is my horse. Ready? Mm-hmm. 
Oh, There's my horse. Okay, okay. It's a galloping horse. Oh, no. it's okay, okay then you do the galloping and yep. I'll do the sound. You're going to play? Oh, okay. okay. Ready? Okay, close your eyes. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm on a field now, like yeah, random yeah. field. <laughs> Look at the spike. <laughs> the audio levels have just gone through the roof. This is kind of, we're going to ask you for your game key in a minute. You're oh, my. We need some oh, revenge. I, I, Go on. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah. Go. <laughs> I got reminded of what I, what I was good at. <laughs> Donald Duck. <gasps> oh. Okay. Go on. In. I can do a Donald Duck that talks and then laughs and then cries and <gasps> falls asleep and wakes up again. Oh my god. Can you can you do a Donald Duck that does that and speaks German? No. No, okay. It's just, it's just, just Donald, it's just a, a Donald Duck. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll work on that maybe yes. next time. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bravo! I feel sorry for anybody that's only listening to this on audio because Soa's face is something to behold <laughs> when she does this. That's a very good. Donald Duck's really hard to do. You need to get right into the back. Yeah, not bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's a Donald yeah. Duck, something like that, isn't it? Yunso, give us a Gengi. Give some noise. Um, you know, like I have some useless Gengis. I can um guess soju from drinking, and I can guess the factory like F one or F two or F three, but yeah. I cannot really show you guys now. Oh. Yeah. And I can <laughs> guess guess someone's MBTI ah. just by like talking to people. Have you told Yunso your MBTI yet, Hemi? Not yet. Okay, so Hemi. But but I saw you for like five minutes, the first five minutes, uh -huh. four letters came up into my mind. Uh -huh. But if I mess up, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> hey, she just done a horse noise in a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> you got okay. nothing to lose here. Okay, okay let's use my MBTI superpower or something. Maybe ESFP? <gasps> Ooh, correct. Oh. Wow. Oh, you're really good at it. Thank you. Because I have like the exact same vibe as you. My friend has exact ah. same vibe, so you give ESFP vibes. Ah. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Oh. That's my one. I've forgotten my one. <laughs> you don't know Reminded. it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you said that you your heads are really silent, so yeah. maybe S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe E and I are a half and a half, I okay. guess. Okay. I don't know the answer, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's okay. Maybe like ESTP or something like that. <laughs> Okay. And then mine? Oh, sorry, but I heard heard yours oh, from okay, her. Okay. But you surely gave like ENFP vibes uh -huh. because you are yeah. talented and you're confident. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how popular MBTI is. Yeah. 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 And how people understand it and the letters and things like that. Mm. It's yeah, really good, really good. Gengi, before we move on from Gengi, uh -huh. I mean. <laughs> Give me one, like. Well, I can't give you a game. <laughs> you know, you meant to I, know you. Can you do a Hongde uh, Mosa? No, I've never done that. Uh, well, okay. I can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh help year. me out! Help me out! <laughs> what is it? I didn't even understand. What um, you know. impersonating. Yeah, oh, an yeah. impersonation. Mm -hmm. Okay, give us an impersonation. Well, you've done Donald Duck. <laughs> Let me tell you this one story very quickly. I was teaching this theater, if you oh. can think of a Gengi. I was teaching this theater group at Solio De, and we were doing this animal noise. Like we all mm -hmm. had to stand up and I would give a different student an animal noise and they had to walk up and down the stage making the noise of an animal, right? And then I gave one of my students, I love this student so much, but I gave her dinosaur. And she, she's quite a sh sh short student, right? And I'll never forget this. <laughs> she, she walked up to the front of the stage and everyone had their eyes shut and she took a deep breath. Right? And she, she meant to make the sound of a dinosaur and she just went, Dinosaur! <laughs> <laughs> she just let out. The, she just said the word, oh. and I just everybody just opened their eyes and looked at her. And she was red faced, just going dinosaur <laughs> as loud as she could. Uh, it was really nice. It was really nice. I like the fact that animals say different noises in different countries. Mm. Oh. Like a dog in Korean says mong mong. mong. Oh. That's a really bad word in English. <laughs> like in England, you're not allowed to call somebody a mong or something like that. Oh. It's quite bad. And so knowing that animals make different noises. To me, a pig doesn't say gul gul. Mm. No. It says oink oink. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that sounds much better. That's gul gul. That's gul gul. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, how handsome is Kim Soo-hyun? Oh. Let's get back to the tea. <laughs> so we, we, we did. You're not you going to hear your cake. Oh my god, I don't have one. I've never done this. <laughs> okay, let's we'll go get, to Kim Soo-hyun then yeah. first. 
he looks exactly uh, as you would imagine, like on screen. I no. mean, to me, it felt like he would. He just. It's just like more, you know, from all the angles you can Is see him. He's. You paused. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a really good um, proportion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. You don't seem nervous meeting these people. Like when when I, I'm only seeing it vicariously or, or through your social media or mm-hmm. things like this, but you seem to be very comfortable in yourself when you're meeting mm-hmm. these people. I and some sometimes I just try to look that way because mm. I have an audience in front of me. I can't be like I'm the MC. I shouldn't be like, oh my god, it's Kim Soyeon, you know. Yeah, Although right. inside of me, I'm like, oh my god, it's Kim Soyeon. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just try to be calm. Uh, but I think um, I have a very stable heart rate, which mm-hmm. also helped me in winning the spacing out competition I believe Mm. so I think that's a plus for me and then I used I mean my first job started live I was live on air for radio and then my second job was also live on TV Mm. so I was used to uh, having that adrenaline and I really love that I love it when the on-air sign goes on the Uh red on-air sign and I'm not I am of course I was uh, I'm I'm nervous at times but uh, I enjoy that Mm -hmm. so that's the same with uh, when I met Kim Soo-yeon and also when I was on uh, U-Quiz so I just try to enjoy that moment and just having uh, that um, adrenaline and that, that tension and mm-hmm. all, all of that. Mm. And uh, I'm glad that it doesn't come, the, n- the nervous part doesn't come through my voice. Mm. <laughs> no. So uh, to other people, it seems like I'm pretty calm. Mm. Mm-hmm. I find that it's generally only experience. Like you can't teach that. Mm-hmm. That people will always be nervous the first few times. But once you've done something like 50 times, 100 times, it, you, you do it without thinking. It becomes mm-hmm. a second nature. There still might be some nerves, but the only way to get through those things, I think, is multiple repetitions. Mm-hmm. And you do it and you do it and you do it. And then it just becomes second nature, like breathing or riding a bike almost, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. It just becomes like that. It depends. I mean, uh, when I'm on uh, television for my regular show, uh, I could even space out in between mm-hmm. <laughs> the news, which I don't. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when it comes to gigs like uh, those MC gigs, they are always different. And I don't do that on a daily basis. So mm-hmm. uh, because every time something's different from what you did before, that's when your level of uh, nervousness goes up, I think. Mm-hmm. And that's the same with me. It just mm-hmm. doesn't show that much, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then um, in terms of uh, the um, in terms of you quiz, mm-hmm. it was just all that, that atmosphere. Everyone was really nice, the staff and also the MCs. That's why mm-hmm. uh, everyone around me made me feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so also on that day, I was nervous, of course. I mean, it's you, Jesok. Yeah. 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 No, it's a huge thing. And it's good that you get these opportunities that some people would only maybe dream of or they think it's not real. They think TV is this uh, big thing. Mm -hmm. But then when people go on there and it's real and you're laughing and you're talking, I I, I think that's a really nice thing to do. Is there any, like, what is your, you can't give it all away, but checklists and and, and things to do, things that still make you nervous. Like you're you're doing the TV, you're doing the, the radio where do you go from here? Mm. President? Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, for one, I'm a German citizen. I can't become the president in South Korea. Okay. <laughs> but I even had president on my list once. Well, chancellor then? Oh, yeah, in, in Germany? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Mm, I don't know much about German politics anymore, but. <laughs> mm. Tell us about mm. being German. Being German. Yeah. Um, or, or no, tell us, sorry, how you identify. That's maybe a better way oh, to ask it. Okay, well, uh, just for, I mean, for people who don't know me uh, yet, I was born in Germany. I lived there for 16 years mm. and I, uh, I have a German citizenship and my parents, my dad is a German as well. Um, so I felt very German when I lived in Germany. Mm. Although I knew I, mean, I I look Asian, I am Asian, but and I am Korean, but I felt like I'm a German, mm-hmm. and I didn't really like to hang around with Korean people when I was in Germany. Mm-hmm. It's not that I didn't like Koreans. I would go to Korean church and I would I would have friends there, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't meet them um, on weekdays. I would not go to the movies with them. I would. Mm-hmm go there with my friends from my German school, from my school. Mm. Um, I don't know. I didn't want it to be identified as a foreigner in Germany. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, that was me back in Germany. When I came to Korea, I first felt like I am a foreigner in Korea. And 
uh, but I was very fast at adapting myself here. So now I feel like I'm a Korean. Mm -hmm. So I would rather identify myself as a Korean. But I love to say, oh, I'm a German. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, yeah, <laughs> gives you the tukjong. It gives you the special point or something yeah, like that. Kind yeah, kind of. Uh, but it's interesting that um, now when I go to the airport and I have uh, and I and I see like Germans or Western people, I would feel. Like I'm in a foreign country. Mm. When in the past, I would feel the same way when I come to Incheon International Airport. Oh. Yes. So, yeah, I identify myself as a Korean, but who lived in Germany. Oh. <laughs> and, and and for those that don't know, like mm. Germany is, an, you have that language skill as well. Do you use it these days, German? No, uh, unfortunately, I don't really get to use German. I don't mm. have Germans around me. I use English when I work. I mm. use Korean all day long. So German used to be my first language, my best language. But mm. now I don't think s that's the case anymore. <laughs> I saw your YouTube video about Sean School. Oh, yeah. I do teach. Yes. And I am a uh, an instructor, an yeah. online instructor. And so like, oh my gosh, she has so many jobs. How does she manage all her time? <laughs> well, it's because I don't do all the jobs every day. So uh, it is manageable. Uh, uh, and I would have to say, um, speaking of uh, uh, identity, I never mm. had an identity crisis or mm -hmm. anything because I think people do not have to identify themselves as one thing or oh. a person from one country. Because you can have, for instance, in, in Germany, I have so many friends who have like a mom from Africa and yeah. uh, a dad from uh, the UK. And we're just all like friends in Germany. Like no, no one would really uh, have to describe themselves yeah. as specifically as being this or that. Uh, but I had... Um, I had language crises. <laughs> uh, I think people who speak different languages, polyglots, would relate to me uh, when I say that sometimes I feel like I speak zero languages. Yes. That's what, uh, what you say sometimes uh, because sometimes you feel like you're not good at you're not perfect in one language in, mm. in any of these languages so i thought i would be perfect in german but after all of the years when i meet a german uh i would forget words and then i mean korean i i never went to i, I didn't go through education in elementary school so i don't have the basics like the hanza and all of that mm -hmm. uh and then in terms of english i only used english in canada for like nine to ten months uh, the rest of my English is what I do for work. Wow. So um, some of those expressions that people use that you see on Friends, for instance, mm -hmm. I don't really know. <laughs> so there right. are these fields uh, within my language that I'm not that com um, comfortable about. I I'm much more comfortable in speaking Korean now on a daily basis. I know mm -hmm. all those expressions. But in Korean, I would have more difficulties in reading the newspaper. Mm. Yeah, so it's very different i have my yes language crises at times <laughs> and i think that's the evidence of knowledge like the more you know the more you realize you don't know mm -hmm. and you you go past that stage and i think that happens with education as well mm -hmm. the the more educated you get the, the more you realize you don't know and how complicated and mm -hmm. complex things are and you stay humble before language and knowledge did you get any culture shock with korea so there, there are language issues and uh, what about culture shock coming into korea being here a year mm -hmm. of education or well, I was never too shocked about anything because, you know, I have that calmness inside of me. I would yeah. be like, oh, I guess that's a Korean thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I was a little shocked about some uh, people spitting on the ground, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> which doesn't happen that much anymore. It stopped, right? Yeah. 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 It, wow, it, it, it's amazing. Like, yeah, I don't see that anymore. But you used to stand outside spitting. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. then, like, I remember uh, seeing sites in, like, PC bungs or something. They would spit into little paper yeah, cups yeah. and ashtrays in the pub. Mm -hmm. And the spitting really seems to have died down. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's because people don't uh, smoke anymore that often outside? The smoking and spitting actually... Uh, I think there was a Korean that thing that they were spitting out the cancer. Mm -hmm. I think there was an old wives tale or something. Oh, there was a belief that oh. spitting helped you because we, we did... I remember when I was at school, I got suspended for a day in England for spitting. Uh -huh. A teacher saw me spit and they said, oh. right, you don't come to school tomorrow. And I was like, oh, so oh. I, I had really bad thing about spitting. Like, don't do it. You get in big trouble. Mm. And I came to Korea uh. and people were just like, <laughs> spitting everywhere. I was like, oh, my God, mm. you barbarians. Oh. What are you doing? Uh, but that's really calmed down now. Mm. There's not as much spitting. Yeah. And another thing I can think of is that I felt um, some people would be very kind. For instance, uh, people who work at the department store, mm -hmm. they would be so kind to me and uh, ask me if they can help me mm. but then just uh, on a daily basis people wouldn't hold the door open for the next person mm. or if you bump into someone they wouldn't say thank you mm. so those were some things i felt was different from 
Germany or Western culture, but I realized it's just a different kind of friendliness. Mm -hmm. In Korea, mm -hmm. people are just so busy; they wouldn't they wouldn't even bother if someone bumps into them. They would just yeah. think, "Okay, yeah." yeah. yeah. But mm, but then you have uh, people being much more friendlier at restaurants or in the in the service sector than mm -hmm. in other countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't I can't think of anything where I was really shocked about the culture. Mm. What, what's your take on society, Korean society today? As someone living here, working here, Korean, Koreaning it, um, you talk about the news in society every day. So you, you have an angle of what's going on. Are you, are you confident? Are you positive about Korean society? Do you look at this place and go, yeah, man, this place has got it going on? Or oh, That's a very difficult question. <laughs> and so many aspects we could talk about. But what do you mm. see in this Korean place? Korean society. Yeah. Uh, uh, and very sensitive question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. There's yeah. no teleprompter, is there? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, it's like, what do you yeah. think? The reason I, I think this place is really nice, actually, but I know I have a, like my own view, but I have two young children here, and I, I think the place is quite safe, and the place is quite clean, and the health mm -hmm. service works, and, uh, you know, there's not there's not drugs and antisocial behavior all mm -hmm. over the streets and things like that. So I have a very positive view, generally, mm -hmm. of Korean society. I realize it's not perfect, and there are many mm -hmm. problems, but overall, I think it's safe uh, and, and clean, and I think the things work. The education, the healthcare, the subways. I, I think it operates reasonably mm. well. But, but I realize that's my view, so I'm curious about mm. like what your take on it is. Mm. As you just mentioned, education. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure about the education operating very well. Right. So I think if the education system would change a little bit, there would be an even greater society. Mm. <laughs> you seem so defensive of Koi. <laughs> You've been like doing this. What, how does it change? What do we do? Like, what happens? What's wrong with it? Is it is it too much? Is it too intensive? Is it too uh, rote, memorization based? Yeah, or? everything you just said. I think first mm. of all, I think it's too competitive. And I mean, I worked. Uh, I lived in a country where I just did my homework, and then I would just go play in mm. elementary school. I would. I didn't know what a hagwon is, uh. and still I'm here. Like doing what I want and yeah. working in the field I want to work without having to have study from morning till 10, 11, I don't know, 2, 2 a.m. Mm. So, yeah, I think uh, that over, I think it's overly educated, Korean Korean education. Mm. Mm. What do you think, I mean? Um I'm currently educating, like, elementary school children mm. or, like, under that age children in Techi. Oh. That is a very um, competitive mm. area of education. And I teach, I mostly teach writing to a second grader elementary school student wow. at 10 p.m. Oh. to 11 p.m. And then even after I leave his house, another teacher comes in. Oh. So right before I come in, he is having his dinner mm. like so quickly mm. and he finishes his dinner and then take my class and after that i see another math teacher coming in mm. and i was teaching him and i was feeling like what am i doing here mm. am i doing the right thing mm. of course her, his mother hired me mm. for like his future and mm. his english yes of course i've got to do my duty but <laughs> You're getting paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm getting paid. I should do what I'm supposed to do. But is it really good for the child? Mm -hmm. I was really thinking that over and over again while coming back to my home. Mm -hmm. And this is not a rare thing. This right. is what's normal in Korea. Yeah. And I think that is abnormal. And I mean, you just mentioned Tae Chi Dong. I mm -hmm. recently saw a documentary that showed how uh, students from Daegu, mm -hmm. far down from the south, mm -hmm. Uh, come to Seoul to Tetsidong on the weekend and they go to Hagwons where the teachers don't even they don't um, teach them but they make plans for their, their they make study plans for them to study at that location wow. just to be in that Tetsi yeah. area and mm -hmm. you know just to be really focused on your studying for that they make that trip to Seoul probably in the train they are also studying so mm -hmm. I, that it just gives me goose, goosebumps mm -hmm. and I think this is mm -hmm. why still so many uh, 
I mean, Koreans, they believe they have to go to one of the top universities and then go to one of the conglomerates to really succeed. That is still there. While when I was in Germany, no one really wanted to go to university. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you don't even have to pay for a university. The, the um, university, the, the tuition is free. And still, not everyone wants to go study at universities. Mm -hmm. They would just pr uh, pursue um, their, like, all kinds of different skills. And I don't know. And it's, I think there's this um, stereotype in Korea mm -hmm. that uh, you can make big money when you go to a conglomerate, a big company. And then if you do something where you use your um, skills, maybe, then you get paid less. Whereas in Germany, you would get, sometimes get paid even more for specific skills that in Korea you would think are lower, pay, lower paying jobs, which you don't have to study that much for. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think when it comes to society, mm. uh, there are many positive things uh, that you especially mentioned before, David, uh, about the uh, how you feel safe in Korea uh, and all of that. But uh, in terms of education, I think things can change, mm. should change. Will they change? Can they change? It's hard because mm. like my kids go through it as well, but I, I don't make them study that late or do these things because it is a choice. Mm. There's also a social aspect, I think, like in Germany. Is it like the, the, the Mittelstadt or you, you can work in a factory or you can mm. work for a, for a small company and still get that social respect, mm. I think. Yeah. You, you're not worried about your, your mom gap or your, your reputation or something like mm. that. Um, in other countries where in Korea, I think that if you don't have that high university, that sky reputation, or you don't have Dechi, or you don't have Degiop conglomerate, it feels like you're a loser or you're yes. not doing enough. So there's a social aspect mm -hmm. to it, I think, where Korean people won't really accept bees or something like that, you mm -hmm. know? That's oh, hard. I also want to mention how in Germany you have those different schools once you get into secondary school mm. so once you're out of elementary school which usually is at uh, fifth grade it depends on the different uh, cities in Berlin I went to uh, elementary went from first to sixth grade but in most other cities it's uh, until fourth or fifth grade so secondary school uh, starts when you're 11th for example, and you can choose whether you want to go to a, what's called a Hauptschule or Realschule mm -hmm. or Gymnasium. Mm -hmm. So there's three different kinds of schools that you can choose. And Gymnasium is the place where people go who want to go to university later on. Uh, Realschule is for those who want to perceive, uh, pursue some um, skills, specific skills. And Hauptschule is for those who want to graduate as fast as possible and just uh, go out into society and work. Mm. So. Uh, at a very young age, uh, German students uh, can um, have to, you know, make um, goals for their future lives. And parents, they would just, you know, let them decide where they mm. want to go. Yeah. And even if they feel like studying later on, they can do that again. They can switch to another school later on. So I think giving that uh, choice at a very young age is mm. a good way to, you know, um, have that, uh, you know, to have no biases towards special specific jobs mm -hmm. and then whereas mm -hmm. in korea you have the same education uh from from uh first grade until they have the sunung right and they all go through the same exam mm. yeah and it's all the same thing and everybody mm. and that's what i think koreans it's hard isn't it there's there's no differentiation between it and in in germany as, as far as i understand that even if you want to go to university if your grades aren't good enough you can't Oh, because right. it's free. It's like, well, sorry, you're not good enough to study this. How about do something else mm -hmm. instead? Mm -hmm. And working at university, I see lots of students in Korea coming in and they're saying, I ask them, what's your major? And they might say French or they might say German. And I say, Sprechen Sie Deutsch? And they say, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they're just there but because they want to be in university. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. they don't have the dreams or the aptitude or the skills, but it's about you have to go to university. Mm -hmm. that's, that's part of it. Yeah. But at least Korean people are educated. I understand completely what you say, that the, the education here is bad, that doing it until really late at night. Yunso, do you have a take on this? You're in education, you're at um. university. Are you, <laughs> are you studying until 1 a.m. at night? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, actually, I was interested in my major since when I was in elementary school, but I really didn't really felt the need in myself to go to university, except for the like social thing. Because when you don't really go to university in Korea, you will be like special in mm. a not very good way if you want to be like certain um, job or if you want to like be, you know, especially for a renowned job, um, university course is almost mandatory. Like it's unspoken rule. So yeah, nowadays you can like search a lot of information about studies on online. So you don't really have to go to university to like pay and learn about things. 
But I think that um, the meaning of education has a different meaning in Korea. Mm -hmm. And um, as I remember, the Sky Castle drama mm. had like a director, study director, who follows the student up all day. And that was to like accuse Korean society of, oh, this is how unhealthy Korean educations are. Their mm. intentions were like that. But in Daechi, some parents asked for their teachers to, oh, we want instructors like that for my students. So I felt really strange for that because, mm. oh, the goal was to like criticize that, but they encouraged more harsh <laughs> educations from that. Mm. So that was too sad for me. Mm. Mm. Look how hard the rich people study and yeah. that's what they're doing. Last semester, it was, I can't remember what holiday it was. There was a holiday in May and it fell on the last day of our class. And so I asked the students in my Seoul Women's University one, um, we don't have a class that day and so that should be our last class and so what we can do is we'll, we, we'll have our last class now mm -hmm. and then next week there's no class and then i said to them do you want to do like a makeup class the week afterwards or should we just finish a week early mm -hmm. and i put up an anonymous poll on the e-class thing right and i've got foreign students in that class as well should we just finish this week or should we do a makeup class on a day off 80 percent of the people said let's do a makeup class I'm like, you have a choice here just to finish the course. Like, we're all done. You don't need to come in. Like, I'm telling you, we don't need to study that day. And 80% of the students, when voting anonymously, said, let's have another class. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the, the, the international students were looking at me going, what the hell is going on, professor? <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we're going. <laughs> like, but the Christian was like, yep, yeah, let, let's study, let's study. Mm -hmm. it, it, I, I don't know where that comes from, but mm -hmm. there is part of that here that I see. Mm -hmm. mm. I see that in you. Hemin, like, this is a story, maybe you don't know this, so I was teaching Kejol Haki, mm -hmm. like a, a summer camp. Uh -huh, yeah. She just came into class to study. Mm -hmm. she already graduated. Really good. And she's like, right, I'm going to come in and study. No hack jobs, no credits, <laughs> nothing like that. I actually went to a Korean university. Okay. Yeah, so what was it? Uh, tell us about your Korea university mm -hmm. experience. You know, I, I, I get to hear a lot that Korean students, they would study like hard until they're done with sunung and no. then they would woo, at university they would just you know drink and have fun drink soju <laughs> <laughs> till you can get can you can <laughs> tell which uh, so. uh, but for me uh, when i was in germany i was really I, I was not into studying as i said i would just do my homework i would not even do my homework i would, I would just uh get my friend's homework the next day just mm. <laughs> just survive, yeah, yeah. I, I was not that typical uh, asian girl in germany mm. so people wouldn't believe me if i say i don't study i just i, I was just studying for uh subjects i liked and mm -hmm. other subjects i would just not even look at i would even hand in like a blank Mm -hmm. <laughs> piece of paper and exams uh, but after coming to Korea I enjoyed studying because I never did that before oh. so I was actually enjoying doing yaja like uh, studying after mm -hmm. after school mm -hmm. and even having dinner with my friends at school that was so such a fun experience for me because usually we would get off at school after after lunch and then mm. in the afternoon but I could be with my friends all day long study together and then in the break times we would go to a coffee shop get some coffee and study again so that's when i actually started to have uh fun studying for the first time mm. and then after getting into university um you, you could you know you get that uh um what do you say you you get your tuition if, if you have good scores scholarships mm -hmm. yeah scholarships right yeah. <laughs> see that's when i think i'm a young <laughs> google what's scholarship in german oh my gosh <laughs> scholarship <laughs> <laughs> oh i can't think of as I said, you don't you don't have to pay for it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so I never had to pay the whole fee for my uh, mm. years at Korean mm. University mm. because I got into studying. Wow. That's great. <laughs> you were first place every single semester. Not first, but um, but enough to get the yeah. scholarship. Wow. Over sat oh some over four. Oh my god. <laughs> Congratulations, you've got, some, you've got some people very impressed wow. here by doing that. But and again, before it was not that way until, mm. you know. And maybe if you'd gone through the whole mm. sunung and the and mm. the gosam and thing like that, you wouldn't have had that mm. um, desire or motivation. Yeah. Maybe you still have that choshim or mm. you've come here with this new, oh, wow, I'm at Korean, mm. a Korean university and it feels like a K-drama and something like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 If you haven't like felt the joy of studying in your high school, mm -hmm. you, you've done anything else like anything else than studying mm. any other dreams other than studying yeah, you mean? yeah yeah 
I was a lot on Sci World. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Nurebangs. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you make of all the Hallyu thing at the moment? I know this is a little bit off topic, but you, you're in the news, you're doing Arirang, and that's promoting Korean culture mm. to, to English-speaking yeah. audiences and things. What's your, what's your take on all of this at the moment? Oh, I'm really fascinated oh. by the Hallyu boom. When I was in Germany, people had no idea about K-pop. I would tell them about H.O.T., mm. Boa, mm. and G.O.D. They had no idea. Right. But now everyone knows BTS and Psy. So, yeah, I should be in Germany now. I would be much more prouder of Korea. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because back then, as I said, I, I didn't really want to show that I'm Korean. Mm. Not that I was not, um, I mean, not that I was ashamed or anything, but yeah, I didn't really yeah. felt proud about it because I didn't really live in Korea. I didn't know much about mm-hmm, Korea mm-hmm. back then. But I, I, I enjoyed K, um, K-pop because my aunts used to um, uh, send me the CDs and t- tapes. Mm. Do you guys know what tapes are? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you age a little bit here, yeah. so. so I used to have my Walkman. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I was one of the, the, I was that generation where you would have um, a tape uh, two tapes and then you would record this into this yes, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah so um i'm really fascinated and proud about what korea achieved in terms of yeah. the Hallyu wave not only in, in k-pop but now in almost every field k-food k-beauty yeah. k mm-hmm. tattoos movies, movies yeah. everything mm. mm-hmm. and it's good for our jobs it, it's good for your job it, it, because mm-hmm. there's a promotion and when you do arirang there's genuinely people listening and mm-hmm. watching these things mm-hmm. because you can sometimes be is anybody out there? <laughs> like you can have this feeling, but you can yeah. see it on the comments and uh, things like uh, this. You mentioned the word, well, you mentioned Boa, who, who I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> but I, I, I was doing, uh, during the, the summer, I was teaching a course on Hallyu, and then I wrote this thing on the board, like, what do you think about Boa? Uh-huh. And my students, and they know every member of Seventeen. Mm-hmm. They know all of NCT's albums. And they put up their hand and they go, Professor, what's a Boa? Oh. Who is a Korean actor? And like all this generation is just lost to them. And so it was so much fun to play them like Sotedi. And <laughs> one of my German students, shout out to Aaliyah, um, she sent me a photo today on Insta saying she'd found Winter Sonata merchandise on her travels because mm. I showed them Kyolyonga and things yeah. like this. And so there's that whole like first, second generation of Hallyu that's. Uh, that's there, and it's interesting you t- talking about HOT and TOD mm-hmm. and things like that, mm-hmm. but the current generation, they don't know. Mm-hmm. We can be a bit Hong uh, Byung about mm-hmm. that. We can be hipsters about it. <laughs> <laughs> to be yeah. honest, when I was in your Hallyu class uh, in Seoul Women's, uh, um, when I was sitting with my friend and you showed us a music video of Soteji, uh, and me and my friend were going, oh, it's giving NCT, low-key giving NCT. We were, we were like that because yeah. we've never listened to Soteji by ourselves before. Uh. So. I can see that, oh, so Soteji influenced future generations of idols so that we can enjoy, like, yeah. no- nowadays idols. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, they've started uploading Soteji videos on YouTube in, like, 4K. Oh, wow. And so you can see them. Do- it's amazing. But, like, because normally they're old, grainy videos. Mm-hmm. But you can see these performances from, like, the mid-90s and early 2000s of Soteji. And it's just in, like... He, his, his skin like burns your television or your or monitor because it's so crystal clear. It's amazing. Mm. What a guy. Yeah, what a guy. So are the, the, the future of Korea. So there's problems with education. <laughs> I'm j- just bringing this towards like, the, like are you going to live here? Are you going to you going to stay here working and go to Germany? Do you feel confident? Are you scared of North Korea? I right? like uh, what happens in the future. So um, I think I really love being in Korea right now. I don't think I want to move back to Germany anymore. That's a very different me speaking now from years ago when I really didn't want to come to Korea because all my friends are in Germany, uh, all the places I like, all the food that I like. People would ask me, German food? <laughs> Sausages. <laughs> Sausages and beer isn't bad. <laughs> yeah, and they, uh, actually my favorite food was kebab, duna kebab, which is the kebab that Turkish people who yeah. immigrated to Germany made. Oh. And uh, I had like at least one or two of them a week so i would miss that and all of that and but now after living in korea for a long time i feel so much comfortable here and i i feel as i said i feel i'm very koreanized and i'm i think i'm going to continue living in korea although if uh i mean i plan to have kids in the future so um as i said i don't really think that much about the future (laughs) but i do not want to you know educate them like that harshly Mm. but to be honest, a lot of people say that first, and then yeah. once they have their kids <laughs> go up to school, it's just everyone does it. So mm. it's so difficult to, you know, not follow the flow. So that is why I wish the whole system would change. Mm-hmm. In, in Germany, you would have um, signboards 
during the summer break that says don't study during the break during mm-hmm. the holidays. Mm-hmm. It's a rule. Mm-hmm. You should just play. Right. Not think about school. Go outside. Yeah. That's what my mum used to do. Go outside. <laughs> go <and> play. <laughs> so yeah, I, but I don't think that's going to change in the near future in yes. Korea. Mm. It, it would be a shame if it didn't. Korea does always change. Like we spoke a little bit jokingly about um, the spitting mm-hmm. that changed, mm-hmm. and 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 the hallyu and the reputation of Korea has changed. The, the economy, the politics, of course, those have all changed. Mm-hmm. Um, attitudes towards LGBT and things like that—they're all changing slowly. And feminism—it's mm-hmm. it, kind of getting there. So. I don't know if it will happen, but I, I think Korean education, it will, it won't suddenly become German and it can't become German and it can't become Scandinavian because there's Confucianism and that's real. And part of Korea's success has been built on like educated people. But I, I think slowly little things I th- can hopefully should change a little bit. Maybe if you're just teaching them 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. That, that would <laughs> yeah. be a that would be a better change. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, we we there are those rules, right? So yeah. Hagwon should close at, I don't know, 10 or 11. It's it, just it, no it, one <laughs> really follows the rules. They just close the curtains and yeah. keep studying, don't they? <laughs> Maybe it's that's why they hired me. Because I'm a tutor. Yeah. I'm not oh. working at Hagwon. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. And now you've graduated. You have to be careful of tax. Yeah. Lucky you're getting paid cash oh. in hand. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Yeah. IRS. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to ask this, Summer, but um, you said you're interested in having children. Like, that's not a story we hear about much in Korea. We normally mm. hear the opposite. We normally hear about people choosing not to. And I have two young children, so mm. I see mothers and fathers all the time. Mm. Like, I'm surrounded by children. Can you say anything about that decision? Um, I don't think it's like it's a big decision. It's just I love kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I would love to have <laughs> have kids that look like my half my my husband have me. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, I think that's just a very um, instinct, mm-hmm. instinctful, instinctful mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Someone once described it as having children is when your your heart exists outside your body, mm-hmm. and that you care for somebody else more than you care for yourself. Oh. You know, that, that's a nice thing. Mm. What happened with our children is that my son looks exactly like me, <laughs> but he's got my wife's personality, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and my daughter looks like my wife and has my personality. Oh, and they're oh. really worried about this because my daughter <laughs> is just running around going, Whoa! <laughs> "No, calm down, Elizabeth. Like, you're meant to be a lady." <laughs> But it's, it's interesting making mini me's mm. because I, I like dogs and things like that. Mm-hmm. But you see everybody with dogs in push chairs. But children are children are something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And guys, any any final questions or anything to ask Soa before we wrap up? I'm, so I'm going to ask you for a, a recommendation of a book, a movie, a drama, or something ah. in a minute. Okay. Yunso <laughs> Hemin. Uh, I have a question. As you sure. mentioned about education and confidence that you have about yourself, would you introduce yourself differently to Korean? And German, like, if you ha- were to express yourself up mm. to Korean, would you say something else mm. than when you introduce yourself mm. about yourself That's to German? An interesting question. Cause like, mm. yeah, but I think I don't. I wouldn't introduce myself in a different way. Oh. Mm. Oh. It was. It would just be a different language. <laughs> oh. Yeah, except for the language. Yeah. I was thinking, cause like for Koreans, we've gotta be humble. Ah. Uh, so like to Germans, maybe. I thought you would say more like good things about yourself oh. to make a good impression. Mm. But in Korea, good impression means being humble, mm. I, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Maybe it's only me thinking. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I was wondering about that. And oh, okay. I have another question. Have you ever felt privileged being a beautiful <laughs> woman in Korea? Oh. <laughs> this was the first question that came up in my mind when I saw you. Oh, <laughs> because like I heard his class. You never about asked me that question. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very genuine. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, first of all, I don't even know if I really agree with you of the the latter part. Oh, <laughs> Yunso was doing this, by the way. You, I, look oh my God. <laughs> I think. I mean, I. I Humble. Uh, no, no, I. <laughs> when it comes to looks, I think I'm very objective. <laughs> but I used to have a lot of like. Uh, complexes. That's mm. a that's a Congress word, is it? No, complex. Com- yeah. Complexes. Um, when I used to be, uh, when I had glasses on, uh-huh. uh, very thick glasses because I have a bad eyesight, mm. uh-huh. and uh, I was like my I was much chubbier chubbier than now, mm. and yeah, I I, I think I be- 
compared to the past, I became a young <laughs> dragon. <laughs> that means that young did that. If you say young did that, it means you uh, you look much better than in the yeah. than okay. Yeah, you you're aging be, nicely. Yeah. yeah, just like Pokemon evolution thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I did it. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think because uh, I am in broadcasting and uh, I know how to like uh, put makeup on. No, I mean I get my makeup done, but still uh-huh. I know what suits me, and uh, that's why I think if I didn't have this job, I might look different than now. But um, yeah, mm. I like I like wearing nice clothes and like umigo and mm-hmm. <laughs> stuff like that. But um, yeah, I don't think I feel privileged or anything. Uh, for, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for answering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. I don't think question. Thank you for the the comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But it, it's a real thing, though. The idea of where multi sanctuary, all the lookism and things like that, how mm-hmm. it works in Korea, because we talk about the privilege of uh, race or gender or things like that, but beauty is mm-hmm. a big thing. Mm-hmm. So the the young or the Pokemon is getting better with age, like it's <laughs> aging like that. Is there an opposite? I'm trying to understand this thing. I've never no, this like, thing. it's like if you say, oh, the young that it means that, especially on the looks, mm-hmm. you have like, um, your looks have improved, enhanced. Yeah. Yeah. Is it like, um, yeah. That's kind of about like career so. thing, but yeah. means like yeah. almost on looks. Yeah, if you were like Munani kid, if you were. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I was a, a baby, um, you know, I was born in Germany, so my relatives would get pictures from me that my mom sent. You know, uh-huh. back then we uh-huh. didn't send pictures on, <laughs> on uh-huh. the smartphone. Yeah. And my, I heard that my uncles were very uh, worried whether she will ever get married or not. <laughs> No. Oh my god! So I was this, I was this fat little baby that didn't even look like a girl. And, oh. <laughs> and now you're on television and now you're I'm in a dragon. newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. But yeah, honestly, I I do care about my looks. That's why mm. I use beauty apps. And mm. before mm. any before I post anything on Instagram, I would you know Photoshop and stuff mm. like that. Mm. So mm. I would say I am. I I wouldn't say that I'm not influenced by uh, mm. Mm. Uh, the the you know appearance mm. uh, factor in this industry. I am. Mm. In influenced by it but i i don't um you know i'm i'm not getting like uh less confidence if i don't get a job or anything i never think that that's got to do with my looks or anything yeah do you work out um i used to work out these days i just uh, jog a little bit yeah okay. Mm. The expression "ketchonesa young nanda" it is like from a small stream a dragon will arise. Oh. From a from humble beginnings uh, mm. you will achieve greatness. I once said that to my wife. The way we're talking about a children's <laughs> education, and uh-huh. they're just going to like a public school in the countryside and things like this. Not an international school. It's expensive. So I said to her. And she looked at me and she went, I'm not a get on. <laughs> she was really angry with me. I'm like, yeah, no, I, didn't, I didn't mean that. This, yeah. Oh my God. Right, if someone would tell me young did that, it could also, uh, you could be offended by saying, yeah. doesn't mean I used to be ugly or what? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I love this. It, it's like you were saying earlier about language. There's so much to learn. Mm. There's so many things. Mm. I learned uh, a couple of days ago, I was reading this selection of essays by... Um, Hong ji I think his name is. Ho Ji-yoon, Ho ji mm-hmm. And um, in there he was talking about kaktugi mm-hmm. And I'd never heard about this. So I, I asked him, either. what is kaktugi? It's like a tongseng mm-hmm. or a yakan saram. If like, you have somebody that's not good at something, he's oh. mm-hmm. like, hey, ah. am, I, am I not right in that? So like, um, especially when I was in elementary school or kindergartner, yeah. we would like play, but when you have like a younger friend, you yeah. should like take care of, that's what or mm-hmm. like if there is a weaker friend, so you should take care of. So you don't really apply the same rule to kaktugis because they should be <laughs> privileged a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah. So like, let's say we are playing hide and seek, yeah. and if there's kaktugi found by the you know sule, the, yeah. yeah, then they just pretend to not see kaktugi Aww. and just go yeah, kind yeah. of like that. It's like if I make a mistake in Korean or something, you might mm. go oh, yeah yeah yeah, uh-huh. yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. something like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was a new one I for me. Something to yeah. Thank really you for that explanation, Yuzo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, did you have any question? Any any last thing here? Oh yeah. So my major is media and especially mm. journalism. So this question is for me and my friends in mm. university. So there are tons of my friends who want to be like you, oh. but <laughs> but they are really worried about oh can I make it or I cannot really believe in myself. Those kind of worries do not really leave our head. So do you have any? Um, experiences or just um, advices for like who don't have really confidence Mm -hmm. to start with um i think you should not have that uh 
근본 없는 자신감? Yeah. yeah. You have to practice. I have a mentor who always tells me practice makes confidence and confidence makes perfect. Oh. So I don't think that I'm just like that confident right now. It's because I I trained myself a lot. Uh, still, I still read the Korean news out loud so that I can um, get that better in Korean pronunciation. I still do that uh, almost not every day, but still at least uh, three times a week. Uh, I still work on my voice and I try to get better at emceeing what can i do better next time so i think just uh practicing just makes it it makes you improve so just continue do what uh, continue what you love uh so if you love what you're doing you are going to practice more mm. and then you'll just get confidence naturally i think that's the case with me mm. i think thank yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> and i also want to um tell you that what you're doing right now uh, being on this podcast i think that will also immensely help you mm. in uh the journalism field because nowadays we have so many possibilities on uh, on these um, video streaming platforms, audio platforms, and social media to express ourselves. So you can all be uh, an anchor. You can make your own news and you just present it out there uh, even before you get a job at a broadcasting station. And I think that was not the case like 10 years ago. So I think, yeah. Thank you. Continue what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> That's so sweet of you. <laughs> I think it's also, I agree 100% what you say uh, mm. so about practice and experience and that's how you get the confidence mm. uh, because it, you can't tell people don't be nervous or be confident mm. if they don't have that experience. Experience is the best teacher and I think as well as, as, as well as speaking on this, you, and so you get to meet a wide range of people yeah. and I think that's the, the most mm. important thing about it when we hear about stories about Yu Dae Seok or uh, Kim Soo Hyun, they're also just people. Mm. You know, every, everyone's just a person and the more you interact with lots of different people, you realise, yes, people are people. Mm. To close us out, so a, a, a book, a movie, a drama, a song. Give us, give us a couple of recommendations. Okay, let's start with a book. Wow, mm. you're very good. Yes. Um, Sophie's World, which uh -huh. is which I read when I was ten years old, I think. It's a book about philosophy. Mm -hmm. It's not too deep though. It's uh, readable for elementary kids. It's by uh, Jostein Gader, and um, yeah, I think it's. I haven't read. I think I just read it one time. Mm. You know how people, if they have a favorite book, they would read it over and over again. But that's not the case with me. Uh, even with my my favorite movies or dramas or books, I would just read it once mm. or uh, watch it once. Uh, but uh, I do it very in a focused way, mm. and then I just keep it in my heart mm. <laughs> and would not even take it out again. But now that I talk about it, I do want to read it again. Uh -huh. So I think it's uh, really good for you to just think of the basic things in life like where do i come from mm -hmm. <laughs> yes is Who there am I? what's behind the planet earth and yeah i think it was the first moment i really um i got interested in philosophy although i didn't like i didn't extend any of my studies into that field but yeah i think it's a book that i really want to recommend mm -hmm. Sophie's World, we've got some reading to do yeah. i've heard about that but i've not read it yet so that's a that's a lovely recommendation mm -hmm. thank you can you say for us in german Thank you very much and see you next time on Korea Deconstructed. Something like that for a Soa Bita. Oh, but uh, do I only talk about my uh, favorite book? or? Also? Oh, no, no, you've got more recommendations. <laughs> Come on, keep going. Movie yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Movie, because, you know, I have so many favorite songs, movies. Okay. So because uh, I, I, for the other questions, I just thought, okay, I can just do it like uh, on, on the go. But then for that uh, question that yeah. you gave me before, I actually... Um, try to think about it more so that's why I wanted to recommend a movie called Gran Torino have you watched that one yeah I've David? seen that that's Clint yeah. Eastwood isn't it mm -hmm, that exactly one? Yeah. yeah so uh, Gran Torino that's a very a movie that evolves around humanism and also uh, redemption and racism as well there are very many elements in there but it was very mm -hmm. it was very uh, touching mm -hmm. after watching it. it and although it's not even it's not a Korean movie, but watching it in Korea, people applaud it inside the mm. movie theater. Mm. So I still have that uh, memory of that movie that I always recommend. This is going to be my prejudice, but mm. and, and so I, I love being corrected and getting things wrong. But this is a, a, a sterling performance by a very old um, Clint Eastwood in this. He plays a very elderly gentleman that's coming to terms with generational change and racism and multiculturalism. And it feels very sort of kind of male focused. I'm going back on my mm. memory from it. So it's very interesting mm. for, a, for a woman such as yourself to see mm. that movie mm -hmm. in which there's an old white male protagonist.
protagonist mm -hmm. as being a movie that can give you empathy or motivation mm -hmm. or, or touch you in a way. I think mm -hmm. that's the, the beauty of art mm -hmm. sometimes, that it transcends identity. Mm, right. Although, I, uh, right. Exactly. Although I don't really have any like uh, personal connections to the theme itself, the movie itself is just yeah. yeah after mm. watching it, first you have that you you probably won't like the main character at the beginning, but in the end, mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So th that's the book. That's the movie. Yeah. Song. The song. The song. Or the um, album. One of my favorite singer songwriters is called Damien. Oh, I saw him in your Instagram. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been stalking a lot of yeah. Instagrams, haven't you? Mary? Yeah, so my favorite song by him is called One More Night. Just the moment it starts, it was like, oh, what is this song? Mm. Mm. Is he Korean? Demi? I don't he's know. Korean. Him. Um, yeah. He's Korean. Um, and uh, he's also he also started acting. Okay. And another very interesting thing mm -hmm. I want to mention is that mm -hmm. Damien's favorite um, actor mm -hmm. is... As far as I know, Kim Soo Hyun. Oh. And then I got to see Kim Soo Hyun after hearing from Damien that oh. his favorite actor is Kim Soo Hyun. So when are you meeting Damien? Hmm? When are you meeting Damien? The next time? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, oh, no, I met him actually. Oh, you've met him? Yeah, that's okay. another long story. Can I talk all about all? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who Damien is. Tell me about it. So um, he actually was a DJ at Arirang Radio. Okay. Uh -huh. But... I didn't know that he was working at Arirang Radio. I, I, I loved his songs and everything. And one day, uh, an Onni that I oh. worked with at Arirang, mm -hmm. she asked me if I knew Damien. I'm like, yeah, I know Damien. Damien. And she's like, he's my cousin. And I heard he's working as a DJ here. So, oh, what? Really? So then I got to meet him personally. Oh, wow. wow. So, what a coincidence. Yeah. yeah. And then hearing from him, his favorite actor, I got more interested into Kim Soo Hyun. Oh. And then a few months later, I met Kim Soo Hyun in 2022 for the first time and uh, got to MC uh, and interview him. And after watching Nungmure Yeowang, I was oh. I was really becoming a bigger fan of Kim Soo Hyun and wanted to meet him again. And then it happened again this year. Wow. So, Amazing. So sometimes I feel like I'm the... <laughs> I'm center the of the world. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like it's Truman Show right. version. So while mm. like Jingo or something like that, the yeah. main character idea uh, or something. Yeah, yeah, maybe there are a lot of Truman shows happening right now, and I'm mm. part of that. So mm. like you quiz and everything is happening for a reason. And my husband, uh, like telling me 15 years ago, oh, how about Arirang? And <laughs> all of that is scripted. Today's show is scripted. <laughs> oh, she knew that. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's good that you enjoy the ride I, I think you know what I mean that you're enjoying all this success and you're able to to look at it and laugh at it enjoy mm -hmm. it and take it all in as it happens to you mm -hmm. because um, who knows where it might go and where it mm -hmm. might continue to mm -hmm. uh, it, it's awesome that you have these experiences and you're able to share them mm -hmm. yeah that, that's that's really really cool also it reminds me how I don't know if this is an appropriate word to use, but who cares? Incestuous, like the Arirang broadcasting TBS thing that world is with cousins and friends and omnis mm. and things like that. So, Yunso, when you was asking for advice about how to get in to those worlds, better start knowing people. <laughs> <laughs> Confidence is really important, but, but knowing people is, is half the battle as well. Right, that's true, because uh, w whenever we have an opening for a job, mm. I would think of the people that recently talked to me about mm. uh, wanting to get into this field. Mm. So I would probably in, in the next years or so think of you as well. So, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think mm. it's also important to have those connections mm. because it is a very small mm. uh, world. Yeah. Mm. I've really enjoyed this. I, I can't, mm -hmm. if, if we cast our minds back about an hour ago or 45 minutes ago, we were doing ridiculous horse and frog noises. <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought of the, your Oh game? my God. Oh my God. God. Yeah. It's a, I'll get stalking. one next time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get one more. I got mine next time. Next uh, time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'll be invited for another. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> please. I think your Genki is asking questions. Your question about, um, uh, so is beauty privilege, I thought. Was, <laughs> <laughs> it was spot on. It was spot on. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Vielen Dank. Oh, yes, you've got to say goodbye. Oh, oh, danke. Uh, should I do it into the camera, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> uh, vielen Dank. Ich bin so froh, dass ich heute hier auf uh, Korea... Oh, sorry. Oh, that was my phone. <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> okay, noch einmal. Vielen Dank. Es war wirklich eine sehr uh, schöne Stunde oder ich glaube vielleicht... Drei Stunden oder zwei Stunden hier auf Korea Deconstructed und äh, ich hoffe, dass es äh, für euch auch eine schöne Zeit war und ich hoffe, dass ich wieder, euch alle wiedersehen kann. Dankeschön. Dankeschön. <lacht>
<laughs> I, I, I love how, and we're finished now, by oh, the way. Okay. I love how in German these days, because when I was learning German, German always sounded very aggressive, like mm. ambulance in German is Krankenwagen. Ah. But when you want to say, like, where is my phone in German, voice mein Handy. <laughs> it, it sounds so like a feminine. That's how you say it, isn't oh. it, though? Handy is Handy. Handy. It's, like, handy. Yeah. it's like English. Ha <laughs> ha